Bokitov Khabarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Like so many of you guys, we have also been watching uh, the information coming out of the United States. CNN uh, especially has reported on China putting its bombers on high alert. And at first, when I first heard this, I thought about reporting this, but I had to take a step back, do a lot more research just to kind of get a better idea of what's going on. And that's what we try to do here. We try to bring out a balance of events that are going on. We are not supportive of North Korea by no means, uh, especially their nuclear program like the United States. Uh, uh, we feel that it is a threat to the United States as well. And of course, their continued expansion. Now, I do kind of understand that Kim Jong-un being a pharaoh of North Korea, uh, a dictator with, without question, uh, but I also at the same time, I think about the, the families that live in North Korea, the mothers and the children and the fathers, many of these people that would never want to live under this dictatorship rule. Many of them, they risk their lives to escape and then their families suffer all kinds of persecution. So I'm not in favor either of the United States using a nuclear bomb on North Korea or just devastating the country and all these innocent people dying that don't want to be a part of this leader. What is has really brought this country to this position is ruthless dictatorship and I do believe that what China has been willing to do and trying to do and help bringing this situation to uh, under control by their sanctions that they begin to finally start doing I believe that that is what would actually bring this nation to its knees without a military intervention so I question why the United States is actually doing such an aggressive posture to go in there with the military and just take them out and again, I know President Trump is, is a tough president. He's firm about what he says. But at the same time, I question whether or not he's really the man that is calling the shots on this. I believe that these, these this uh, war powers that is running the United States, the shadow government, is the ones that are actually doing this. They're the ones calling for it. And of course, it would uh, stimulate the U.S. economy at the, at, the, at the lives of many children, women and children, and even men that, as I said, would not want want to be under such a dictatorship. And I do believe that under Chinese pressure, seems that they do contribute to, I think, something like 81% of all of North Korea's uh, trade relations is through China, that China could easily cripple the nation and bring it to its knees and, and de-escalate this whole situation. Uh, now, with that in mind, let's go right into some of the things that are going on here. Um, and, and, and let me just real quick, just make one quick comment. I had someone recently, and I approved the comment, but uh, I wanted to respond, didn't get a chance to, uh, that was actually questioning our translation of one of our articles the other day about Russia being willing to defend North Korea. Uh, you know, occasionally we do make a mistake or something, but we'll always correct that if we do. But one thing is for sure, my whole family, or my wife's family, I should say, not my whole family, my family is from the United States. In fact, most of my family is all military or former military, including myself. I served in the Marine Corps. And my son, my eldest son also is a Army veteran, my brother as well, a veteran of the Army as a Ranger. My father served three tours in Vietnam. My grandfather served both of them in Second World War. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of military background in our family. And of course, I consult my son and my, my stepbrother as well on military issues today. Uh, as far as in my, my wife's family, uh, grew up in the Soviet Union, speak Russian, and my father-in-law also was an officer uh, in the Soviet military in Slovakia. Uh, so yes, we do have an extensive knowledge and background. I also have a brother that lives in Japan, a sister, a doctor in Japan. So we have a lot of Eastern uh, knowledge and abilities at our disposal as well. So we try to bring all this together and we're not here to support to say that Russia is right and we love Russia and, and North Korea is right and China is right. No, what we're trying to do is to take, because we're in this part of the world, to bring a balance into our reporting for you guys uh, but if we do make a mistake, we will correct that. Uh, but that article that I shared with you the other day, it is clearly showing uh, that uh, the evidence was there that Russia intends to protect North Korea, to defend them from any type of an attack there. They're not there to attack North Korea, even though they do not really have any type of, uh, uh, of uh, military uh, agreement with North Korea, 
It seems to be that Russia is making this posture because of the declining relationship that they're having with the United States. President Putin was very hopeful, and so was I, and so many of, the, of you as well, voted President Trump into office because we wanted to see a de-escalation with Syria. We wanted to see a de-escalation in Europe. Uh, where, we, where I live at now, and yes, we do see the buildup of military on a daily basis. You're always seeing things change here, and it is very troubling. Uh, so we were hoping that this would be that way, and many Europeans felt the same way, that Donald Trump would actually de-escalate the situa situation with Russia uh, on, in the Baltics here, and that has not happened. And I think that's what's contributing to Russia moving a military force down on North Korea's border as well. It could be, you could say, well, to control an influx of refugees from a war by the United States. But then if that were the case, why are they sending all of these anti-aircraft uh, missile batteries down there as well? So we've seen a lot of movement there. We were able to report it thanks to our good friend Lorenzo and already happened. He gets a lot of those uh, military movement scoops beforehand. So we were able to share that and we cl see clearly what's coming. So again, this is what we're looking at right now when it comes to this, uh, these reports about China puts bombers on high alert. And so it's really becoming concerning what's going on that we're seeing. And of course, President Trump is actually alluding to the possibility as well uh, that China's putting their bombers on alert is for a contingent to deal with North Korea. And when the news first came out, I began to look at this and I thought, well, before I respond on this, I really want to dig a little bit deeper. I thought originally that this may be what, North, what China was doing, was working with the United States in order to take down Kim Jong-un. And then as I began to look more and more at this and looking at the articles in the Russian language as well as in the Chinese language, uh, getting these things translated. I've got a friend that's in, uh, that's in uh, Shanghai as well that uh, lets me know about things that are going on from their perspective. So we're able to see what's happening and I wanted to get a clearer perspective to see is, is China, are they willing to actually launch an attack against North Korea? And it does not seem that that's what they're up to. Now, let's take a look. And this was another article that came out on CNN. This, this man here that they're interviewing actually does seem to show a balance on that. And I want to share this interview with you here, just a portion of it. Let's listen to this. Is uh, what that U.S. official told us, that these bombers have been placed on a high alert. Now, they said it could be uh, because of some uh, reaction to the ongoing uh, tension on the Korean Peninsula, but it could be a whole lot of other things as well, potentially even just exercises uh, by the Chinese military. Uh, but the, the Ministry of Defense, unsurprisingly, here in China, has not responded to our request for comment. Uh, what we did see from Trump... You see, that was interesting right there. He said there, that's what the, the, the Washington is hopeful for, but I think that the military knows better than that. And I think what they're trying to do is just to give the U.S. people a little bit of hope that this is actually what China is doing. Uh, and China, granted, they are willing to do any type of uh, sanctions in order to try to bring Pyongyang to its knees there to where they would be willing to face, uh, that, that, that they would be willing to cripple the economy there in order to get Kim Jong-un to stop this nuclear program. But when it comes to an actual war and to launch a preemptive strike on North Korea, who happens to be China as their 81% of their trading partner, not that China is getting maybe a lot in return, it's just that China is really the one that helps support this government here. You have to remember there's several factors involved here. One, they're both communistic nations. Uh, and although uh, China is putting that pressure on North Korea to cave in, and Russia has tried to put pressure on them as well. Both countries, both Russia and China, neither one have been willing to use a military action against this country. Now, we did report a little while back, uh, Putin did threaten at one point that if Kim Jong-un didn't stop, he would himself come down there and, and deal with North Korea. Uh, and neither, now of course, now Russia does not have any type of uh, any type of military ties with China, other than they have helped them in the times past. It's always changed. Followed the collapse of the Soviet Union under when Gorbachev was in power. Uh, he began to deal with Seoul, South Korea. Why? Because he got a nice bonus of 1.5 billion dollars to the uh, failing Russian economy at that time. So yeah, they did things like that. But it's not all the way that people actually think. 
And here again, we have on Reuters, Trump praises Chinese efforts on North Korea menace Pyongyang warns of a strike. So North Korea is also talking about doing a preemptive strike still. Yes, is it a threat to the United States? Sure it is. And I don't doubt that at all. But as I said, do I want to see the children and women that would love to be freed from this dictator, uh, Kim Jong-un, to, to all be massacred and massive bombardment of a U.S. military attack on them when it could possibly, if given enough time, I mean, look at the sanctions they put on Russia. Look at the sanctions they put on, on Syria and things like that. They allowed these to be on there for years. They didn't just go up and attack Russia the next day after they began the sanctions. So it's a little bit nuts to think that, okay, China begins to put sanctions on last week, but if they don't do what we want them to do, we're going to go attack next week. Uh, there's actually an intel right now that just came out uh, that, of a guy that I know of from the Middle East that is saying that President Trump has already uh, said to his military, within two weeks, we're going to do an airstrike. Now, that was said a few days ago on the 17th is when that came out. I haven't shared that with you as of yet. So the United States is talking about striking within two weeks. The USS Carl Vinson will be the, in the J Japanese Sea there by North Korea on the 25th, so looking at the 17th to the 25th, yeah, look at what you got there within two weeks. B-1, B-2 bombers between the 24th and the 27th will be deployed in South Korea. So yes, the U.S. is getting ready. Maybe this is why Chinese bombers are being put on high alert and they're getting all their aircraft maintenance brought up to date to get all their aircraft on alert as well. It doesn't take that many uh, that much military of China to bring down North Korea. So it sounds more like China is concerned about a U.S. military intervention and the way that China may have to uh, respond. Now, you might think that that's crazy, but let me share with you an article here, and I want to give credit where credit's due here. This is on Lawfare. Uh, the title of the article is, The U.S. Considered a North Korean Strike. Let's not forget that China has promised to defend North Korea from an armed attack. All right. Now, this is not just some uh, radical website out there declaring that China is going to protect North Korea, even though China does have 150,000 soldiers on the northern border of North Korea. China also happens to have makeshift hospitals there that they're building right now. China's moved in uh, its, uh, its medevac units. They've moved in uh, SU-300 missile defense systems. And do you think North Korea has talked about anything about shooting at China? Not one time have they said they're going to take, the, that I'm aware of, and bomb uh, uh, Shanghai. But they do talk about Japan, military base, U.S. military bases in Japan, in South Korea, the presidential palace in South Korea, the United States mainland. Yes, they threaten all of these here, but you don't ever see them talk about China, right? So let's see what this uh, article is actually talking about here. Well, he's talking about July 11th, 1961, China and the DPRK signed this, the Sino-North Korean Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation and Mutual Assistance. Article 2 of the treaty states this here. Contracting the parties undertake to prevent aggression against either of the contracting parties by any state in the event of the contracting parties being subject to the armed attack by any state or several states jointly and thus being involved in a state of war, the other contracting party shall immediately render military or other assistance by all means at its disposal. So why is China getting their bombers ready? They vowed to protect North Korea according to their own treaty. Now, it doesn't say that they wouldn't do sanctions on them. So that's part of the scope. And you got to remember, like I said, they do share something in common. Although Kim, uh, uh, President Xi uh, Jinping is not a dictator, per se. He's an elected official, but it's still a communist government. So their officials are a little bit different on the way they do their elections there. You know, Kim Jong-un is a communist party, but he's just a dictator. So it's kind of hard for them not to protect somebody that is like-minded, right? The U.S. also signed an agreement with South Korea, but... As you can see on this one right here, it's just over administrative control. Other words would be dangerous of its own peace and safety and declares that it would act to meet a common danger in accordance with its constitutional uh, processes. So the United States made an agreement with South Korea, but nothing like what China made with North Korea. This agreement here with South Korea is like, you know, well, you know, if, if our constitutional processes allow it and we see that we, we have to do it, we will. The United States is going to protect South Korea mainly because of the U.S. military base there, and understandably so. But there again, are we really that big of a threat? 
I mean, is it really that North Korea is that big of a threat for U.S. interest? I think what makes North Korea more of a threat is the more threats that we make towards them. Kim, Kim Jong-un is really not that big of a threat. Pretty much anything he's got, we can knock down out of the air the moment it leaves, it leaves the ground. Now granted, him getting these satellites up into the atmosphere with nuclear bombs on them, that is a danger. But the U.S. also has Star Wars technology that can knock all these satellites out with no problem and setting back on that and not risk starting a nuclear conflict. I think there are other means that we should consider as well. China is ready to promote political settlement and hotspots with Russia, according to Sputnik News. And of course, they mention North Korea and Syria. And the only reason I think that Russia would be getting involved in any of this to begin with is because the relationships with the United States has deteriorated. Their hope that President Trump was going to bring a peace, and I believe that President Trump really was hoping to bring peace. As he stated, Crimea should be part of Russia. It's always been a part of Russia. As he stated before the, uh, the, before the elections and everything, that you know, we shouldn't have NATO's forces built up on Russia's doorstep, uh, that he wanted to bring that down. He wanted, to, he wanted to get rid of the sanctions. Russia was very hopeful of all this. Now, was this President Trump only saying this to get elected by the people because we as the people of the United States also didn't want this war? Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Uh, maybe he really meant it from his heart to do that. But the shadow government steps in and says, no, buddy, you're going to do what we say because war makes us a heck of a lot of money. And we're going to bomb uh, Syria and we're going to bomb North Korea. And we're going to bomb them all. And then we're going to deal with Iran and Russia next. They may get it a lot sooner than they think. Well, maybe they want it. Maybe they want China and Russia to bomb the United States and nuke our country as well. I don't know what the case may be, but it's putting the lives of the American people at risk for all this shadow government's crazy moves that they are doing. So at any rate there, all you guys, we already know about this right here. And this is why I say, you know, even as an American, no, I don't appreciate this. Iran has done the same thing, made the videos of, of attacking Israel and things like that. So Israel considers uh, Iran a threat because of all of its missiles attacking uh, Israel and wiping Israel off the map. Well, now North Korea does the same, showing their animated versions that they're going to attack the United States as well. Yes, that is a problem. Yes, something does need to be done, and I agree with that 100%. And of course, uh, also on uh, the uh, UK Express here, World War III fears North Korea to complete lethal nuclear submarine missile system soon, UN warns. So they're building up more, uh, more public opinion to justify a war that they no doubt have pre-planned for quite some time. Uh, so, but... You know, I guess what they figure is if they can't get Russia to act over all the buildup on their western border there, over there uh, in the eastern part of Europe there, on Russia's western border through Lithuania, Latvia, and all these places here, if they can't get Russia to, to get into a fight with us there, well, maybe if we go over there and bomb the mess out of North Korea, then maybe Russia will react. And then we have a justified means to attack Russia from the other side as well. I don't really know, friends. I don't know. In fact, this was interesting. Topwar.ru, this article came out today. NATO and Russia, will there be a war? And the article here, when you read through this, is really interesting. And they go into the same things that I just shared with you. Russia was really hoping that Trump would help restore the relationship, that they would get rid of the sanctions, that they could work together mutually. But they do talk about that the tensions continue to rise, the buildups are still there, and that Putin is not a man that will just back down to all the threats and that he reacts to every action that they make and that somewhere along the lines, it's going to spark a war if things don't get a bit more careful. That's kind of the, the day's bad news. I hate to tell you that. The only good news that I know of is Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him, I think now's a good time to get to know him. I'm Stephen Benin, you're watching Israel News.